my gosh. It is a hot, sticky summer day here in the first week of spring in the swamps in Florida, in Dunellen, Florida, here on this sticky, uh, it is a Tuesday afternoon. It is March 26, 2024, so it is too hot and sticky to be out what I want to be doing today, which of course is planet nibbling out on my new real estate investment uh, down here in Florida. So instead, I will uh, just sit here and, and, and I feel kind of weird doing this, guys, because on that other channel that nobody listens to, I, I covered this last night or that, that other that other guy covered this because I, I decided to run it on that other channel because I really make an effort not to talk about politics and particularly the dog and pony shit show called the 2024 election. Sancho. Is that your, is that your, that is Sancho's report. Uh, Sancho has a collapsed trachea. So as long as I've got you here in killing time, if your dog has this thing called a collapsed trachea and they go into one of those fits that Sancho just went into, here is what you do. It's a lot easier with a little dog. Okay, you take the dog you sit him in your lap, you take the palm, he hates when I do this, you take the palm of your hand and you put it over the dog's nostrils and you push their head back, you know, blocking off their breathing apparatus, push their head back and the trachea pops back out. That is the collapsed trachea cure. Uh, it only gets worse the older the dogs get, I hear. But anyway, back uh, from uh, how to fix your dog's collapsed trachea is a, a bigger problem is how to fix your country's collapsed political system. So, I try to avoid this, but as I was reading this essay by this fellow named Indica on, uh, from Medium.com on that other channel, I really started thinking uh, I need to make an exception and, and, and put it on the channel that more than five or six people on the planet actually listen to. Uh, for more than two minutes. Now, Indica, as I was talking about on that other channel, I'm, I'm not going to get that much into his, the, it, it's the first, it, it, I, I read from two of his essays last night. The first essay I read from, which I'm really not going to discuss here, where he called uh, both Donald Trump and Joe Biden two wrinkled up old nuts in the same sack. Uh, as to quote Indica, who gives a fuck? That it is, as far as what it means to, uh, to, to this country and more importantly to this planet, uh, n n not not looking at the individual personalities and characters of these two men running, but what it means uh, for the planet if anybody thinks there is any difference between Joe Biden or Donald Trump on what it means uh, to be a human or more importantly, one of our fellow earthlings on the planet, you are completely deluded. 
and maybe it takes somebody from Sri Lanka to point this out to you. I I anybody uh, not involved in this little uh, personality whatever, uh, you know, from anybody from any other country, and there's a few of us even in this country looking at this shit show, understand it's frying pan or the fire. It makes no fucking difference to this planet which one of these jackasses uh, wins, but it is clearly going to be Donald Trump. Uh, thanks to Joe Biden putting uh, Donald Trump in the White House. And so anyway, you have probably heard uh, about this uh, new document, this 920 page, I would probably call it a manifesto called Project 2025. Uh, I know some of my more politicized doomers are freaking out about this uh, Project 2025, and I am not sharing this so much. It is, this has nothing to do with the shit show. Uh, I, I am just going to uh, address IndyCar's interpretation of one small part of it, uh, and this was his latest essay on Medium.com. I read Trump's transition plan, so you don't have to. Part one, an introduction to destruction. An introduction to destruction which is exactly what this is. So this is a long, uh, and, and it's just, and then there's going to be another one to follow it. So I am just going to read the last chapter of this long uh, part one of uh, the, this introduction to Project 2025. This is, this is not so much, guys, an anti-Donald Trump rant. Uh, I, you can find that on that other channel. Uh, it, it, I, don't, I don't even think Donald Trump's name is mentioned here. This is just a, it, it's basically saying, you know, uh, he, he's making the point that last time Trump got in, you know, he was still just kind of untested and didn't, and didn't really, and he was just kind of new at the game, but now all of these other, uh, just some of the most reprehensible people from these right-wing think tanks such as the Heritage Foundation and whatnot, are, are, are now uh, grouped around him like the confederacy of dunces that they are. Uh, but instead of, in, instead of uh, surrounding a genius, they are surrounding the biggest dunce. So we have a confederacy of dunces uh, propping up a dunce. But we're not here to talk about the dunce in the middle. We're here to talk about the confederacy of dunces, meaning this right-wing machine behind it uh, who have written this 920-page manifesto uh, called Project 2025. Uh, and we're going to go down to the last chapter from Indica. What not to cut. What they, you know, meaning the confederacy of dunces behind Trump, what they, Ray Trump, want to cut is social services, public education, DEI initiatives, basically all the lipstick on the pig, but not the pig itself. In fact, 
they want to baste the pig in oil and roast it. These conservatives, somewhat analogously to Russia here, want to take the real politic view of just leaning in to fossil fuels. And then he quotes, he has several long quotes from Project 25. I guess the main author, some fellow named Roberts, not that important to get into who Mr. Roberts is. All right, anyway, this is from the report. <clears throat> The next conservative president, meaning Donald Trump, of course, uh, that's another way of saying Donald Trump should go beyond merely defending America's energy interests, but go on offense, asserting them around the world, which is exactly what we've been doing for at least, what, going on 100 years anyway. America's vast reserves of oil and natural gas are not an environmental problem. They are the lifeblood of economic growth. American dominance of the global energy market would be a good thing for the world, uh huh, and more importantly, for we, the people. Full-spectrum strategic energy dominance would facilitate the reinvigoration of America's entire industrial and manufacturing sector as we disentangle our economy from China. Globally, it would rebalance power away from dangerous regimes in Russia and the Middle East, it would build powerful alliances with fast-growing nations in Africa and provide us the leverage to counter Chinese ambitions in South America and the Pacific, can you say, the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is what uh, Mr. Roberts is referring to here. And then we go back to, uh, to Indica for his, uh, no, you just sit right there, for his uh, interpretation of what you just heard. <clears throat> I'll ignore the climate change part because within American politics, that is just a pious platitude. Biden pretends to care about climate change, but he has actually drilled and fracked more than anyone before, the same as Obama proudly did before him. There is no political payoff for actually cutting fossil fuels and there is no cost to just lying about it, which is all Democrats do. What I will point out is that the reindustrialization this document discusses is a physical, political impossibility. We were past a huge blunt in the form of fossil fuels, and we are at the roach end. Now, it is a non-renewable resource, and we are just running out. America is fracking its last vein, and there simply is not enough economically viable oil to make America great again. The problem is not political will or regulations, and it's not even the climatic consequences. America simply does not have the natural or human resources for another economic boom, and even if they did, the planet 
would just explode even faster. There you go. And, 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 and that is the bottom line. If, if we were to do, if Donald Trump were to manage to do what Project 2025 is guiding him to do, and millions upon millions of Americans cheering him on while he does it, even if it were possible, what it would mean is the planet would just explode even faster if they are the only thing that success means, and, and not even counting all the other stuff, I'm only talking about the ecological environmental fallout uh, part of this uh, manifesto. It would throw us out of the frying pan into the fire. This is why a vote for Joe Biden uh, or versus Donald Trump is a vote for the frying pan or the fire. It is your choice. It makes no difference which one of those senile, those wrinkled old nuts in the same sack uh, end up in the White House. Uh, the, this planet uh, is fucked. Uh, Joe Biden might throw the clueless little moron greenies a few little scraps and bones to, uh, to hoodwink them into thinking he is doing a damn thing to save this planet. The planet might have a couple of more years left in it if Joe Biden were to uh, stumble and fall his way into the White House, but it ain't going to happen because Donald Trump is going to lurch and swagger and slouch and slog his way into the White House because of Joe Biden. But where was I? Back to IndyCar. Uh, uh, okay. The America simply does not have the natural or human resources for another economic boom, and even if they did, the planet would just explode even faster. This rerun strategy is akin, he's talking about rerunning the 1980s, the Reagan years over again, you know, the last big party that the planet eaters had. This rerun strategy is akin to saving the Titanic by laying on more steam while most of the engine room is dead, or would rather be YouTubers. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting to me, and which is why I read my enemies, is that Roberts correctly identifies the actual problem of climate collapse, which is philosophical humanism, or what Dr. Tom Murphy calls human supremacy. As Roberts, you know, in the Project 25, 2025 writes it, quote, <clears throat> this is right out of the, of Donald Trump's manifesto that will be put into action the day he hits the White House. He is putting all doomers on alert. <clears throat> At its very heart, environmental extremism is decidedly anti-human. Stewardship and conservation are supplanted by population control and economic regression. Environmental ideologues would ban the fuels that run almost all of the world's cars, planes, factories, farms, and electricity grids. And of course, what he doesn't mention is, and if they succeed, uh, which is why I am cheering on Just uh, Stop Oil, is that the global industrial economy would collapse, 
the global agricultural system would collapse, uh, billions of people would starve to death within six months to a year. Uh, if uh, these environmental ideologues would uh, actually succeed in banning fossil fuels. Abandoning confidence in human resilience and creativity in responding to the challenges of the future would raise impediments to the most meaningful human activities. Yes, they would stand human affairs on their head regarding human activity itself as fundamentally a threat to be sacrificed to the God of nature. Well, I am so glad that the architects of Project 2025 understand that human activity, not to mention the humans doing the actions, are the threat to this planet. That is exactly what human activity is. It's uh, a fundamental threat uh, to, to, to nature is what it is. Back to Indica. He is rightly wrong. Human affairs do need to be stood on their head for other life forms to have a chance to live. But never mind now. Industrial civilization has no reverse gear. The old gods of weather are angry and they're just going to clean slate everything. These guys are focused, meaning the architects of uh, Project 2025, these guys are focused on a change of administration and going back to the 1980s because American culture is actually dead and has to reboot everything. But times have changed. These are the end times. Scientifically speaking, if you must be a heathen, yes, these are the end times, scientifically speaking. In the 1980s, you know, back in uh, the Reagan years, the halcyon days, of, and it really is, you know, I, I never thought that we would be looking back uh, on the 1980s as the halcyon calm before the storm days of Ronald Reagan. Wh what I would give to turn back the clock uh, to the days of Ronald Reagan uh, compared to the 2020s. Uh, you know, it look, look, looks like Goldilocks. In the 1980s, after what Westerners call the oil crisis, there was a clear fork in the road. The climate science was already there. International instability was already there, and research like the limits to growth had come out predicting collapse by about the 2020s. I'm thinking it was more like 2050, but anyway, by about the 2020s, if people did not change dramatically, the Reagan revolution was effectively a counter-revolution against all this. The react, they reacted against the changing consciousness of the 60s and 70s and acted against global changes with coups, corruptions, and invasions. The alarm had been sounded clearly in the 1970s, but they hit the snooze button for another few generations. 
they just continued the American dream a little longer, drilling, killing, and printing money to paper over the cracks that appeared. Others, other honestly wrong scholars like Francis Fukuyama called this the end of history. And it was because Western civilization honestly ended then. This is just the coda where everything is a reboot, including this policy document. They are just harking back to douchebags of the past like that will cleanse anything. <laughs> and uh, I will put the, uh, the link to uh, this full essay on here. You can read the rest of it. And uh, Indica will be coming out with part two uh, in the next few days. But I've heard all I need to hear. Uh, I, I, I really don't need to hear any more of this shit. I, I, I've heard uh, all we need to hear. Uh, he, he, you know, the war on doomers uh, is, is, is just beginning and uh, 2025 will be an official declaration of war against doomers. That is exactly what it is. That, this is a declaration of war against anybody uh, calling out their bullshit. Anyway, with that, I'm going to wrap this up and uh, go unload a uh, truck full of dead cypress trees off the back of my gas-sucking truck while I still can. Yes, is your trachea uncollapsed at least? My guys.